And were there movies that in your mind once you started researching said okay so these are movies that came the closest I mean let us say Parinda or Satya or that sort of thing or was there a bit of skepticism even there? Well no I think I think the two that you named I think uh, uh, again certainly two of the best um, representations of of, um, of our sort of especially of Bombay I think. Right. Um, not just in terms of sort of faithfulness to the lingo or to the, the you know, the, the I, I just mean in terms of the, the ordinariness of Nana Patikar's house in Parinda, right? The sort of, um, that staircase that leads up to his room, right? right? Uh, and in Satya, the depiction of the inside of uh, police stations, right? right. Like the, the sort of way the wall is. I think those both were very good about catching the sort of atmosphere of that. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think I really admired both of those for that. Right. I think an incident that you had mentioned again in an interview after Sacred Games reminded me of uh, Bhikkhu Matre's character in Satya, which was your wife coming in, I mean, I think after reading some of the initial drafts and saying, you're really making me like this Finnish <laughs> guy, Tunde guy, and I don't <laughs> want to like him yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah. And uh, which was nice because again in Satya, I mean, of course, you have had various gangsters in movies and played by the biggest stars and uh, you've liked them very obviously mm -hmm. but uh, there was a less obvious liking of a yeah, character like yeah. Vikmatri which I mean of course in a much larger canvas is also true for Ganesh Kai Yeah. so yeah. well yeah I mean I, and you realize as a storyteller that point of view is an incredibly powerful tool in your in your sort of repertoire you know that that once you attach the readers or the viewers point of view to a certain protagonist it's it's very hard for the for the viewer not to sympathize with that right, right. Or at least not to sort of in some weird way root for the success right i mean and i can't again i'm going to forget his name but the showrunner the guy who created the sopranos talked about this right right that, right. that at some point, he just kept getting astonished, like this Tony Soprano is the worst <laughs> thing and people are still rooting for him. <laughs> so, so in, in his mind, you know, there's a scene where, um, and I don't want to give it to anybody who hasn't seen it, but uh, Tony kills this guy cold-bloodedly, who's very close to him, who's been ultimately faithful to him, right? right. A family member. And so this guy, the TV showrunner was saying, I thought at that point, people will finally say this guy is, you know, <laughs> he's e pure evil, right? right. <laughs> and even then, no, you know, you sort of go along with right. it, right? right? Yeah. And so then often sometimes in narrative, there's this sort of ritual punishment of the, right. of the bad guy at the exactly. end, right? So what happens, it's a very, you know, as a viewer, the very seductive and comfortable thing. You get to vicariously live all the bad stuff right and all the you know i achieve power and right. do whatever i want right. you know? so all our sort of fantasies about that <laughs> right. get fulfilled and then you kill off the guy at the end right, right? and so it's okay 